On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we make a stop in eastern Pennsylvania to visit with Russell Horn. Russell shows us around his home farm and the various great PA bucks they've tagged over the years. You'll also get a chance to look at a wide variety of species like black bears and albino squirrels placed throughout their home. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. The Exodus team is traveling around the United States to take a look inside the trophy rooms of some of the most interesting whitetail hunters in the country. From giant bucks, unique racks, and riveting stories, welcome to Whitetail Cribs. What's happening, guys? I'm Russ Horn, and this is uh, my parents' house. Take a little tour here. Recently uh, moved out of here, so just come back for a little quick visit. This is their kitchen. This is where all the homemade meals are cooked. And this is the summer kitchen out here. Laundry room. My mom does all our arts and crafts and antique stuff out here. You notice there's antiques everywhere. Here is uh, in the back porch, home of the uh, new Traeger Timberline this summer. Fireplace room in the rooms of all rooms, right here. This is where all the stories are told and memories are relived. Here we have a uh, bathroom, kind of a unique bathroom. Some more trophies in here have uh, some of my great-grandfather's old mounts up here, stuff that he harvested, uh, fish he caught, that he mounted back in the day, talking 60s, 70s. And uh, here we have our walk-in shower. And I'll take you into the office. So here you have the office. Uh, there's some Western mounts out here uh, for my dad and actually my mom. She shot that antelope and those are my dad's mule deer antelope. Um, some turkeys my dad and I shot. Over here I collect some old vintage hunting stuff, uh, old licenses, uh, fly fishing, duck calls, all the old PS ults, uh, Remington Winchester cartridges. And then uh, Here's a little map, hard map of the farm that uh, I had made and kind of part of a recipe to success here, I'd say. Kind of have everything pinned down. Um, a buck I called Hook. I actually had a calendar and this on the wall. Every time I'd see him, I'd drop a pin, you know, where all my cameras are, food plots, tree stands. Every time I got him on our lift cams, um, I uh, had to jot down the calendar so I knew exactly what day he was coming out and it's kind of what lead up to his kill. So this bear here, uh, I was hunting a funnel pinch point with my buddy. I hunt with a Hoyt, he hunts with a crossbow. Um, the relevance to that is this bear came through, I drew back, I shot, pegged a branch, the bear took off, and my buddy with his crossbow kind of shot at the bear moving and hit and grazed his paw. So the flat paw, you can't see it right there on top, has a red flesh wound um, in the mouth. So kind of. Kind of a little joke and a little teaser to my buddy because he didn't get him. I did. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, we had a, my grandfather started a power sports business back in uh, 1977 here in Pennsylvania. And I uh, sold Player, Skidoo, Kawasaki, um, Troy Built, Cub Cadet, Simplicity. Um, so that was kind of what started everything. And uh, we sold the business in 2007, I believe it was. And uh, ever since my dad's been working for can -Am, BRP. So for every year that he's been with the company, he has you know their, uh, the cover of their magazine for that year. Um, this day's still working for him. So this is it. I guess uh, in the words of the old MTV Cribs, this is where you sit and get crunk, talk about your, your trophies and all your, uh, your hunts. Um, so I guess I'll start maybe over here. So all these up here are pre QDMA, 
um, kind of when we, my dad and my mom first bought the farm. Um, so that all kind of, once we started QDMA, kind of developed into all these. So I'd say this is real time and post QDMA and the results. Um, that buck right there was the first book buck that we actually harvested off the farm. My dad shot that with his bow in 2008. Um, and then uh, that was a 140 class. Uh, the top buck up there was my first ever rifle buck. Um, and uh, I think I was 12 years old when I shot that buck. And that one was 21 and a quarter inch spread, just regular eight pointer. Um, the one below it here was, I think was 2016, I believe it was. And that was a buck I called Sticker 10. We were after that, my dad and I were after that buck for a while. Uh, my dad missed that buck twice, and I missed him once in the very beginning of the season. He came out, it was end of September, he came out. I didn't have a range finder, misjudged the distance, shot right underneath him. And uh, my dad ended up shooting at him twice um, when I, uh, when I was in college, I was in college at that time, and uh, I would get a text. I just missed the. I just missed sticker ten, so I ended up having to finish it for him. So that's that buck. Uh, another buck under here is a buck I'd never had any history with. I've never never saw it before. Um, I uh, went out hunting. He came through first thing in the morning. I saw some little junk. I saw he had a sticker on his one side and some dimples for brow tines, and I thought he'd make 120. And he was a you know he's a nice buck. So. I shot him. Um, the others, the other two on the end are my dad's. Uh, he shot both of them in uh, Pennsylvania gun season. Um, and then you come over here. I have a, a buck I shot over at our other farm. Uh, the neighbor, a good friend of mine, called that his chocolate buck. The antlers were really, really dark. The bases had cedar. He was rubbing his head in the cedar trees, had cedar uh, shavings and stuff all on, all on his brows and the base. Um, I ended up stalking that buck and shooting him with a rifle in rifle seasons, like the second week, PA gun season. Um, and uh, I got a mink. I trapped uh, an albino squirrel, my dog Wyatt and I got here last year. Um, and then uh, come on over here. My biggest buck to date is definitely my Ohio buck from 2018. I had a lease out there, uh, Morgan County, with a couple buddies. Um, I was the last one in the lease. They invited me out. We had about 220 acres that we had leased out there, two parcels. Um, and that was a buck we called Chicken Foot, based off his brow tine. And um, we went out there and we were hunting. We got there on a, on a uh, Friday. It was pouring down rain. We got in the stand for the afternoon to hunt. I ended up missing a buck, probably like a 140, within the first five minutes. I didn't even have my harness hooked up yet, nothing. Um, he was right underneath me. I drew back. It was wet. Everything blended in, shot, hit a branch, and that was it. Um, so he sat there till uh, Monday. Monday came around. Uh, my buddies asked me to come on the four-wheeler, check the trail cam cards for him. Um, so I did that. And from where we parked the truck, there was about 125-yard um, difference between the road and the end of a trail. There was a big kind of dip, a big uh, ditch in there. And I would, drove around with the four-wheeler and I saw all the signs, scrapes, rubs, you name it, it was there. And I asked them, I said, you know, are you guys hunting this? And they said, no. So we push everything in the back of the farm. And when we walk in, I thought, well, these, these bucks are circling back. They're definitely coming back through here. So I um, asked them one more time if they were going to hunt there. They said, no. I went to town. I got a pop-up blind. I came back. I brushed in the pop-up blind. And uh, I said, listen, Wednesday morning, I'm coming here. I'm going to hunt this deer. And it was a big joke because they're like, there's no way you're going to kill a buck out of ground blind out here. It's not happening. Um, first thing that morning, we went in the dark. I checked the cams on my way in, had a couple bucks on them, nothing that I would shoot. Um, we got there, and I missed a 140, 150 that morning. Um, too far, ducked the arrow, went right over top. Um, I sat there. I was like, you know what, it's still early. I'm going to go get my arrow. So I went out to get my arrow, and I heard something coming up out of that ditch. And next thing you know, I saw this rack, and all I saw was rack. I was like, oh, my God, that's chicken foot. So I knock an arrow, I duck down, he came up out of the ditch, came down, he hit 25 yards, turned broadside, I drew back, smoked him, and I called my buddies up and said, I'm going home. And right away they thought, dude, what happened? Like, are you okay? I was like, I killed chicken foot, like I'm done. I'm packing it, I'm going home. So I waited for them, and the deer ended up running 
like back towards the truck. So it wasn't hardly a drag at all. So that, that was a cool time. That was a real good trip and good buddies. Um, and that, that was 160 class deer. So that's definitely my biggest scoring deer right now. Um, I have a turkey over here. My dad and I shot, um, I think I was 13 or 14 years old. Um, we shot that here. That was my first long beard. That one actually had a double beard, which is pretty neat. Um, then this here is, uh, is my biggest Pennsylvania black bear. Um, this one weighed just over 400 pounds. Uh, I shot it in gun season the last Saturday, um, a few years ago down to their other farm. And, uh, that was a really good time. I had all the cousins there, family at the family farm. I shot it. We all drug it out. Um, so that was, that was a cool experience. First bear ever shot off that farm in Pennsylvania. Um, and then I have, uh, my hook buck. So my hook buck, um, that, that scored out to, that was a 140 class deer, about 147. Um, that buck the year before had that hook that comes out of the left side of his head was about that big. And I never thought he would blow up and be that big again. Um, or at all, I should say. Um, so I, we passed him up, didn't shoot him that year. He came back the following year and just started blowing up. Um, that from that year, I actually have his shed. Um, I have labeled hook. Um, so this was his shed. Um, from that same year, I had a buck we called tight tall eight, which is the European in there that I showed you guys about. Um, kind of similar size. I had tied him together. I told myself I'm going to rattle that buck in with his own antler. Um, had it in the tree when I killed him. Didn't end up rattling him in with it. Um, he came out naturally. But uh, that was a cool buck. Um, I, I was after that buck for a long time. He started traveling. All the neighbors knew about him. Everybody knew about him. Everybody started talking. They're like, oh, have you seen that buck? I'm like, yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. I don't know what happened to him. But, you know, I, I knew he was still around. Um, so I ended up getting that buck the uh, day before Thanksgiving years ago um, and then my first every archer buck is the one right to the right of him um, that was a 19 inch spread uh, first archer buck so I was pretty pumped about that um, I was 13 I believe I was when I shot that buck next to it uh, is one of my father's bucks um, he shot that with a uh, in the gun season Pennsylvania rifle and then over here I have my first ever Pennsylvania black bear. Um, this bear I shot in two th the fall of 2012. Um, shot him here at the home farm. I uh, never killed a black bear before. I, the year before I went out with my buddy, we went up to uh, a local mountain state game land. He ended up shooting one that I pushed out to him. Um, and then I was like, I, I got bit by the bug. Like I had to kill a Pennsylvania black bear. So I ended up finding this one, and uh, this is my first one. This one weighed 250, and uh, yeah, my dad said when I move out, this one has to stay. All the mouths can go, but that one's got to stay. So I uh, over here, I got a picture of my great-grandfather. He grew up in the Great Depression, hunted, trapped, uh, fished, you name it. He pretty much did it. He made a living off of selling furs back then. Back then, you could get 40, 50 bucks for a red fox pelt, um, but... So that's kind of kind of where it all stemmed from. Generational thing went from him to my grandfather, my dad, and and uh, I definitely still have the itch. Here's a coyote that uh, we got here up top. I actually have my great grandfather's trapping basket um, with a few furs I caught. Got a beaver, a couple fox pelts in there, um, some traps, uh, things of that nature, and the signs that are up in here. Um, the raw fur dealer sign, that was a legit sign to his business back in the day. Um, the other one up here is raw furs, deer hides bought here. Um, and uh, that was another one of the signs. Um, got uh, a squirrel that he actually mounted back in the day. It was in pretty decent shape yet, so hung it up in here. And this is a duck, a green wing uh, that him and I shot together. Um, that was my first teal that I ever shot. So that's... Uh, it's a cool little bird. Over here, I have a pheasant killed here at the farm. Shot a few out west, went on a few trips for them, but that was the first pheasant I, uh, I got here on the farm, so I saved that. And this was the first fox I ever trapped with my great-grandfather. First set, actually, I ever 
learn to make and uh, trap this one. It was definitely worth mounting. So I have that here. It's a nice little prize possession. All right, so now you guys have seen all the rewards um, of uh, QDMA and my passion for hunting in the outdoors. Um, now I can go show you outside what takes place and where the process starts. Let's check it out. All right, so we'll uh, jump on the Can-Am Defender and go check out some food plots and some of the kill spots. So back over there is the office and the porch where we shoot our bows. So here is the honey hole in the fall. Um, I actually was that hook buck and the sticker 10 buck that were inside. I uh, gave my dad first opportunity to shoot those bucks. Um, two years in a row consecutively at the same time. I said, hey, do you want to go hunt the stand, shoot these bucks? They're probably going to come out there. He said, no, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. So I said, okay. So I went out and got it done. Um, so this is, this is it. I got my stand locations up here. I got a ladder stand and a hang on for filming. Um, and uh, yeah, this is usually is all turnips. Turnips, winter greens, um, that's all sanctuary. It's all thick cover over there. Um, I have uh, some CRP type stuff, some tall grass over here for bedding. Um, and uh, yeah, that's really about it. So here's another field right on the other side of that one. Um, this is usually uh, hay and then uh, clover, chicory, turnips. Um, over here on the other side, you'll see a uh, Exodus Trek can. Up there, you'll see one of our muddy blinds. Kind of see over here, this is a field we let grow up for more cover. Um, planted cedar trees in there. Cedar trees are tough to transplant. They really, essentially, they like shitty soil. And you basically have to strip the topsoil, get it down to bad soil uh, to transplant them here. That, that's one thing I found out. Probably tried transplanting about 75 to 90 cedar trees and probably only a dozen, two dozen have actually took. So it's a, uh, it's a tough task. Over here, we have um, cornfield. Up here, we have an excess render. We're looking the food source. This, uh, this farm we've been working on for a long time since my parents bought it uh, back in 99. And it's obviously been a uh, roller coaster we've had really good neighbors for a few years and we had a couple neighbors move in that uh, you know they uh, outlaws is the easiest way to put it um, and uh, really does a number on your deer herd but uh, for the most part 75% of our neighbors are awesome um, we get along very well um, and uh, really that's kind of a big key to success is uh, neighbors and most importantly the legality of everything when you have everybody abiding by the same rules when you seem to prosper. Here's another one of our uh, Exodus cams, lift two, over here on the tree, overlooking our water hole. This here is just another hay field with some thick uh, stone rows, some more vegetation, more browse for the deer. Um, goes back into here to, to woods, um, and then over towards our neighbor. Um, he's a really, they're really good people. Over there you'll find another uh, Lift 2 cam. And a render. This is the field we let grow up right here. Um, I've planted numerous things in here. Obviously the winter um, kind of mats everything down. 
there's a uh, another render cam we have out um, I'll tell you what these cell cams have definitely changed the game as far as you know you're not having to go in there disturb the area um, you can you, you don't have to go in there and disturb the area by by scent by checking batteries by pulling your SD card um, you know you can monitor stuff uh, before you you go out to your stand in the morning in the dark you see if there's been you know anything traveling through um, so you kind of pinpoint it um, you know the night of um, and I'll tell you what, Exodus uh, with Scout Tech, that right there has changed the game. That app is everything in there is so fluent. Um, it's it's self-explanatory. You change all your settings in there. Um, to me, that is the bee's knees, man. So that is the tour of. Uh, my parents' Pennsylvania farm. This is where I grew up. It's where it all started. Um, and uh, we've got a couple other farms that uh, we didn't get to touch on, but that's for next time. So you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, man. Catch you later.